Eight Steps to Finally Have a Cervical Orgasm. Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be talking about how to have a cervical orgasm. I was out at dinner with some friends the other day and one of the women asked me about cervical orgasms. And what became really clear in that conversation was that she had never experienced one and wasn't really sure what it was all about. So somewhere she's hearing that she should be having cervical orgasms, but she feels she's never experienced one and has no idea how to have one. I hear this a lot from a lot of women. Uh, they feel like they're supposed to be having them. They hear about how amazing they are, but they just don't know where to begin. They're not sure if they've ever had one before or what to do to have one. So we're going to unravel the mystery of cervical orgasms in this video. But before we do that, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Doing so greatly helps the channel. Every time you like one of my videos, every time you share it with a friend, if you subscribe to the channel, all of those things tell the YouTube algorithm that this content is valuable and they will show it to more people. Hey everybody, I am Kevin Anthony and I am a certified sexologist, tantra counselor, NLP practitioner, and sex, love, and relationship coach. And for over a decade, I have been helping men, women, and couples have the relationship of their dreams and the best sex of their lives. Okay, number one, let's start right from the beginning. As I mentioned with my friend at dinner who was like, I'm not even sure what that feels like or what that even is or how I would even do that. This is common for a lot of women. And I always say, if you don't know what the proper stimulation on the cervix is, if you're not even quite sure where to find your cervix or what it feels like when it is stimulated, start by doing some self exploration. Uh, get yourself a good toy. Uh, one that has the right shape and the right length uh, so that you can begin to explore your own cervix and feel what it's like. Oh, when I touch it here, what does it feel like? I would also suggest uh, doing this at different times of your cycle because it's going to feel different at different times of the cycle. We'll get into that in a moment. But this idea of exploring your cervix first by yourself will really let you know uh, what it feels like and when your man is inside you and he's touching your cervix you'll know oh okay that feeling I'm feeling that's him touching the cervix uh, and you'll get to also know what types of feelings you like so rather than having him kind of fumble around trying different things like let's try this and you're like "Ooh, ah that's uncomfortable well, let's try this yeah maybe you'll be able to say, here's what I need you to do. Move like this, right? So exploring on your own is a really great way to get a feel, literally <laughs> and figuratively, for what it's like. And furthermore, if through this self-exploration, uh, you can manage to have a cervical orgasm on your own, then you really know what it's gonna take to get you there. And so self-exploration is a great way to start to really figure out and sort of unlock the mysteries of your cervix and cervical orgasms. The second thing to know is that your cervix will change position depending on where you're at in your cycle. So if you are bleeding or if you are after ovulation, your cervix will tend to be lower and stiffer. And when you are ovulating, it'll tend to be higher and softer. That's kind of important to know. It's important to know for a couple of reasons. One reason is that because it's changing uh, position, you'll know that at certain times of your cycle, it will be easier to access than others. So depending on the depth of your vagina, the length of his penis, uh, and where your cervix is at, that might mean at some points in your cycle, it's really easy to stimulate the cervix. And at other points in your cycle, it may be more challenging or not possible at all to reach it with his penis. So if you're trying to have a cervical orgasm and you know where you're at in your cycle, you can time it such that you are having penetrative sex when you are at a time in your cycle that you're likely to be able to hit the cervix. 
And of course, it's also good to know where you're at in your cycle because the cervix not only will change position, but will also be firmer at times and softer at times. And so the type of stimulation that, that you will like on the cervix will vary based on where you're at in your cycle. And so that's kind of important to know also. And these are all things that you can uh, really figure out by doing that self-exploration. Okay, once you've done that self-exploration and you're aware of how it changes position and how it is sometimes soft, sometimes hard, you've had a chance to really feel what it feels like, maybe you've even experienced a cervical orgasm on your own, now it's time to try it with your partner. The first step to doing that is to communicate with your partner. This is really, really important. You know, it, you shouldn't really ever have goals like, okay, in this lovemaking, we are absolutely going to have a cervical orgasm today. Like, because you, you can't predict that, you can't guarantee that. But if this is something that you would like to experience, you can communicate it beforehand and say, okay, you know, I'd really love to see if we can stimulate my cervix today and how that feels. So would you be willing to try certain positions uh, with me? Would you be willing to, you know, maybe pay a little bit extra attention to uh, the feedback that I'm giving you because I'll let you know, yes, that feels good or no, that doesn't feel good or maybe move this way or that way and really just turn it into fun experimentation. I mean, if I were a man, and I am, <laughs> and I was in that position where a woman was saying, hey, I, I wanna give you a little bit more direction, I'm like, okay, let's figure this out. I wanna know the secret. I wanna know the secret sauce. How can I do this for you, right? So don't be afraid to have that conversation ahead of time. If you wait until it's in the moment and you start being like, no, I need you to do this and I, I want you to do that. You know, if you don't have a really good connection and you haven't had just good conversation around sex to begin with, he might start to feel like uh, he's doing it wrong or you're bossing him around or that sort of thing. So communicating from the start, you can say, hey, here's, here's kind of a fun little game. Here's an experiment. Here's something that we can try today. And here's what uh, I would like to do in order to try that. Once you've had that communication, now you are ready for the show. <laughs> One of the most important things and the thing that I think that is not talked about often enough in videos on how to have a cervical orgasm is a component that's not physical. So a lot of the other things that uh, I'm gonna talk about and some of the things I've already talked about, about position and timing in the cycle and what sex position you're in and what types of stimulation, they're all great, they're all valid, they're all important. However, one of the things that is often overlooked is the need for a woman to really, really open and expand. So what do I mean by that? I mean energetically as well as physically. So during the lovemaking process, it is the woman's job to really let go, to really open, to really expand both her physical body and also uh, energetically. This is really, really important. And I think it's one of the biggest blocks that a lot of women have when they're like, I'm doing all the things, the stimulation, the position, the this, that, the other thing. But what they're not doing is being really open and receptive. And one of the reasons is it's really vulnerable to be as open, as deeply open as you can possibly be, accepting all of your man inside of you. That is a difficult thing for a lot of women to do. And it requires a lot of trust in your man and a, and a really deep feeling of safety in that moment because it is so vulnerable. So if you're a man and you're listening to this and you're trying to figure out like, how can I give my woman that cervical orgasm she's always wanted? Make sure that she trusts you completely and that she feels completely safe, that you are creating an environment of safety and trust that allows her to completely let go and just open up to you as deeply as she can possibly open up. Okay, number five. So we're talking about this making sure that she's you know, as open as she can possibly be. One of the ways to do that, aside from creating safety and trust, is also to do a really good job with foreplay, right? Making sure that you're warming her up properly. There is no way she's just gonna instantly be wide open to her depths and be like, yeah, I'm taking all of you in like that. It's just not gonna happen. 
there has to be some build up to it. Uh, now, some women can get there faster than others, you know, depending on, you know, the nature of your relationship, how long you've been together, how deep the trust is, what, you know, how often you have sex, when the last time you had sex was, where she's at in her cycle, sometimes she's hornier than others. I mean, th there's a lot of complicating factors there. But in general, it's going to take time. So you want to make sure that you really warm her up. And, you know, that can mean, of course, foreplay. And that can mean doing all sorts of things from massage to touching to kissing to you know playing with the genitals to penetration as well um, but even if you get to that point of penetration and you do it sort of early on that doesn't mean it's let's go straight for pounding the cervix because she's probably not there yet so that would mean you know okay i've done the foreplay now we're into penetration but I'm still gonna start slow with the penetration and work up to it, right? And you'll know, you know, if you're, again, if you're a man listening to this, you can absolutely feel when a woman's vagina just really relaxes and opens up. Like you, there, so there, it's actually called vaginal tenting. It's something that uh, we will talk about also uh, in a minute in this video. But this idea that the vagina actually um, sort of tents, it, it opens, uh, more and changes shape, we can absolutely feel that. And if you're not feeling that as a man, then you know she's probably not ready for cervical stimulation. Okay, number six. Now that you've done all of those things, you want to make sure that you increase the chances that you can actually stimulate the cervix. So that means utilizing positions that allow for deeper penetration. So there are multiple positions that allow for deeper penetration, one of which is missionary, but with her legs up. Uh, and so, you know, if you have an average size penis and you've ever, you know, had sex in that position and you put her legs up, you've probably heard your woman say, whoa, 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 that's really deep. You need to go slow, right? Because that's a position that allows for some really deep penetration. Uh, sometimes doggy style is also a good position uh, to hit the cervix. Um, but any, basically any sex position that allows for deep penetration. In fact, Selena and I did an entire video. Uh, it's on this channel if you just search for cervical orgasms on the best sex positions for cervical orgasms. So I won't cover all of that now. Just know that you know, if you're attempting to stimulate the cervix and have a cervical orgasm, you want to be in a position that allows for deeper penetration. All right, so now you're in a position where you can touch the cervix and you are stimulating it. What type of movement does the cervix like? That's a great question. Well, in general, the cervix likes kind of slower movements. It doesn't necessarily like poking movements, but movements that brush against it. So you'll hear people talk about the windshield washer motion. You'll hear people talk about, you know, moving around the cervix. All of those are fine and possible, but rather than focusing too much on that i think it's better to just keep in mind that in general the cervix likes more gentle stimulation and rhythmic stimulation and so in order to do that that often means using your hips a little bit guys yeah you're gonna have to move those hips now, i'm not much of a dancer and celine used to tease me all the time about being a not you know being a dancer she's like come on move your hips and then we would get in bed and she's like i don't get it how can you move your hips so amazingly when we have sex but not on the dance floor well it's just a matter of what you love doing <laughs> but i i tell that story because one of the keys to uh, that sort of rhythmic motion where you're stroking the cervix is to get your hips involved Right? So it's not so much of a pounding motion as it is a side-to-side -side motion or a rotational motion. Those are things that generally feel good on the cervix. Now, there might be times where she does want more of a pounding on the cervix. It does happen, uh, but she will let you know. And it's usually after she's had a lot of stimulation and she's really wide open and she's really wanting it and she's in that right time of her cycle right that's probably when she's going to want that more i would say listen to her lead uh, because she'll let you know when she really wants that okay and lastly number eight just slow down this isn't something that's going to happen super quickly right so you're going to start with a lot of foreplay you're going to really create that 
uh, environment of safety and trust. You're going to gradually warm her up. You're going to move into penetration. You're still going to be warming her up. You're going to be waiting until you know you really feel that tenting and the juices are flowing and things are really getting there. So it's a process is the point. So don't worry about trying to get there fast. Don't worry about whether or not you even get there. Sometimes it's just not going to be possible and other times it will, right? So just, you know, don't have great expectations like we got to have this or it's got to happen in this session or whatever. Uh, the more you pressure her to have one, the less likely she is to have one. And that's true of orgasms in general. So have fun with it. Experiment with all of this, but just slow down. And, you know, it might not happen, but you might find that she's like, oh, but that that was good. That was, I was close. I really felt it that time. Right. And just, you know, keep trying this over and over again. And eventually, eventually you will be able to unlock the cervical orgasms. Of course, this takes both sides. She's got to be able to soften. She's got to be able to really let go, really allow herself to be so open that you can reach those depths. And then you have to uh, be able to last long enough to get her there. Because again, this is a process. It's going to take a while. You're going to have to be able to withstand the sensations you feel when you are stimulating her cervix because it's going to be really intense uh, often on the tip of your penis. So you're going to have to be able to withstand that. Uh, and you're going to have to know how to use your penis to stimulate it properly. So it's a process and that's OK. It's actually a really fun one. And when you do have those magical moments of unlocking those earth shattering, mind blowing, you know, disintegrate into a million particles, uh, uh, cervical orgasms, you'll both be thankful that you took the time to make it happen. All right, there you go. Those are eight tips for having cervical orgasms. And as always, if you want to find out more about what I do, everything from my coaching programs to uh, this YouTube channel to my podcast, my online courses and products, all of that stuff, you can go to kevinandceline.com forward slash link in bio.